Hi, I'm Simon St. Laurent. I'm senior editor at O'Reilly Media. I'm the incoming chair of the OSCON conference, and I'm here with my super peers, uh, with Ed Dumble, who's retiring from OSCON after six years, with Sarah Novotny, who's been at it for three years. Three years now, yeah. And, and Matthew McCullough, who has taken the stage this year and improved the show already. Uh, the show's been going for 15 years, so you know things have changed a lot over that time, and it, 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 it feels like one of the best features of OSCON is that every year is different. There's, there's, there's continuity, but things kind of keep moving. And so I guess what I'd like to start with is, you know, what's, what felt like it was new and different this year? I know there are lots of different pieces. I'm sure everybody has a different one. Um, and then, you know, maybe we can talk more about where that goes. So, well, I think the sentiments are what I noticed that changed the most. It's not always the technology that you notice is A and B different year to year, but how people have an attitude towards it. Is it nascent? Is it exploratory? Is it what the leading edge people are doing? Is it the comfort zone? Or is it now in maintenance or something like that? And the elements that I've noticed are things like uh, Lisp are no longer just the esoteric, <laughs> well, right. you seven people can have a little room. <laughs> this, is, this is now cool. It made the keynote. I mean, it's on stage controlling robots. And to me, that, that says it's, it's in that center zone now. You also see old technologies get a revitalization, such as Lisp, and you, others, you see others sort of ebb for a while until it becomes obvious where their newest, the newest uses are. Erlang's another good example. It's been around for years and years yes. and years, and now because we're moving to a services model, you have the need that telcos had 30 years ago within the web services. It, it only encourages them when you tell them they were right all along, though. So be very careful. I won't say that. I didn't say they were right. I just said they had some neat tech. Okay. Hmm? I think the most defining thing about OSCON right now is that we won. Right? That open source is uh, considered a default way of releasing software and collaborating. And that is one thing you see that's obviously in contrast to 10 years ago where the, there was much forging uh, agreements mm -hmm. and relationships and ways of working. But what comes with that is also, you know, when you grow up with TV, you don't understand what it was like before there was TV. <laughs> and as you grow up with open source, people take it as a, a default, which is great, but maybe don't understand all of the battles that were fought. And some things that come along with that, that's why this morning we were on stage encouraging people to put license files in the mm -hmm. GitHub projects. Because that has been, you know, licensing your content enables other people to use it. But there are a lot of people today who are doing open source who don't even understand that and the places we've been through to get to that, to get that API for collaboration. So I think, yeah, it's great that we've won and there's an open message we can take far out. It's time also just to review a bit of where we've been through and help people understand what it is that this community is built on. Yeah, it's fun to me when I talk to people who aren't sort of open source centric. They're people who are frequently large enterprises with demanding legal departments who are just starting to edge into it. Right. And in the last three years, those conversations have kind of gone from, we're really interested in this strange new thing. And I'm like, well, that was me 10 years ago. But now they're reaching the, the comfort zone. Um, they, can, they finally have made the cultural shift that it's not just, okay, we have to get this strange looking contract through legal, but here's how we actually reorganize around it. Well, you also see that evolution in um, consumer products that are not even technological. You see people spending time on community engagement and to that feedback and making sure that there is the ability of the internet is used to give the direct feedback in a way that didn't even exist 20 years ago. So you have that opportunity, and then you have, again, sort of this disruption to default. That was OSCON's tagline a couple of years ago. And as it becomes more default, it changes who you're talking to, who you're interacting with, and how you're interacting in a lot of ways. You're going from sort of the old model of uh, indie developer in a basement to a community to a world where you're now presenting and sharing this idea in a way that um, has to be available and accessible to an enterprise. 
And once you prime that pump to have open source already pass through some of these systems, the machinations, the legal aspects, 2, 3, 7, 19, 25, it gets pretty easy <laughs> once it's just the normal thing. So when you say change the default, yep. it absolutely does. And it also kind of, I would use again another metaphor, primes the pump because yep. it's just normal now to have yep. it flow through those, even if there are still processes that are necessary for yep. every time you do it. Yeah, there's still work to be done in the sense of yes. it's it's obvious and people are uh, companies are much more accepting of inbound open source software, but it's still really difficult to get a lot of companies to talk about what their contribution, external contribution right. ruling is. I went looking on the web for a default, so like a, a starting point for a legal document for what my company's um, actual contribution sort of guidelines should be for some for our staff who want to contribute back to open source projects and I couldn't even find a template. One of the fascinating aspects that we heard of a bit this morning is we're talking about open source and Python software and what's is now a default for us. But what's happening at the same time is what you might call the softwareization of the, of the world, yep. right? Right. Increasing parts of it becoming yes. programmable. Um, increasing parts of it being manufactured on demand through 3D printing and all kinds of software control. So right now we have a culture that's not only dominated software but is able to spread out into places which were prohibitively expensive for enough people to get involved in before. Uh, we've seen it with arts and crafts, uh, we've seen it with small 3D printing and baking. One of the exciting things, I think, is the Open Compute Project, which is doing that at the data center level, yeah. right? This is not even open sourcing your, data, your blueprints for racks or motherboards. This is the hold down plans for uh, data centers. Yeah. So it's very early to understand exactly what impact that's going to have. It's certainly an exciting place to be. Well, I was going to ask about hardware, and then you actually like took it to whole levels beyond that. <laughs> right. um, you know, I, I kind of feel like... Software was the easiest place for yeah. this culture to develop, and now it's migrating to a much broader... Well, more more things a bit. We're yeah. difficult cats to herd, is what he was <laughs> implying there. So that's, of course, where it bloomed. It also goes from software to hardware to consumer product. I mean, we have right. customization of everything these days. Like, Ed is wearing custom OzCon shoes, because we can, we can wear, we can build these things on demand, and I can if you'll forgive the term, fork the project, say I want it based on a converse, and now I want it to be custom in this way because it fits my needs. And that whole idea, it's interesting to see, we say start with software, and you said that yep. was an easy place for it to start, yep. but now you're talking data center plans and yep. the like. There's a charity that I just spoke with the other week that also says per country, the way that their operations must work will change per mm -hmm. language, per culture, per yep. governmental system, mm -hmm. and they want to give plans to the UN and then have forks of those. And so I think this, this phrase, or at least the meta concept, is very unique. It's coming from software and just invading all these other domains, like an army. We, we've talked to some people who want to do this with legal agreements, like having documentation that are baseline legal agreements, and then we just fork the legal agreement as necessary, instead of rewriting the same contract over and over and over. And you know, much, much of this stuff is really, it's about the people, right? Mm -hmm. And you have the sense that OSCON, hanging around talking to speakers, that we are standing on the shoulders of giants, and many of them are still alive yes. and underneath us. You know, yeah. I mean, they're, some of them will be on the stage. They're amazing people. But the, the other thing I wanted to mention and bring it back is that, yeah, this is great, this large topic phenomenon that we're talking about. But the other thing about open source being a default, this is a lot more work for us to do because it is now a default development stack for people. Ten years ago, you developed on the Microsoft platform, you downloaded Visual Studio, you had their amazing online help, and you were all set, right? Um, same if you were a Java programmer with NetBeans or whatever. Now we're talking about um, you know, this thing called a polyglot programmer where different parts of the stack have different languages, different database technologies. And that isn't all joined up in the same way. We've created tremendous power, but actually it's accessible to fewer people than mainstream programming used to be. I think there's a job of work for us to be done on that. We saw some of the hints at it when you think about Mark Shuttleworth demonstrating Juju this way that you know, whole databases can be brought up and down without expert knowledge and glued together. And that's a sign of the way things to come. But our progress has brought its own responsibilities and, uh, and its own problems as well. So you're saying there's a bit of democratization that, that still has to happen to these things. So there's a strata in which it's accessible and there's a strata to which it's not as accessible. 
Absolutely. categories. Absolutely. You know, if you if you were a default provider of a software environment, you, you you're there to make programmers more effective, right? Mm -hmm. Part of it is freedom of expression, and OSCOM celebrates that as wonderful. Part of it is about multiplying the effectiveness of humans, which if computers aren't there to do that, what actually are they? And what are they there for, right? to serve? And so we have a responsibility for all this wonderful technology that we've created to enable people to use it better. An interesting angle to wonder why some places it blooms more and others it has a, a diminished impact is to think about how many um, thousands of years of societal organization are centered around establishing a hierarchy, a pyramid, right. with someone at top and then a few important people beneath. And I think the thing that open source has, has broken through is the person who joined yesterday, who notices a small defect in that, is relatively enabled, this is not just lip service, yeah. to make a repair and to get yeah. that folded in. And it happens. It's not, again, just an exemplar for the stage. We right. watch this now. But does that happen? It's, it's almost a rhetorical question. Does that yet happen at governmental levels? Maybe. It has to do with information distribution in a lot of cases. Like people who are hierarchically at the top often have more information, whereas it's not as distributed down to the bottom. And so as we are able with the internet specifically and with democratization of information, able to give more data lower, you can make changes that are more I think impactful. So. Yeah. So I, I think that great cultural shift is sort of what we're is what we're promoting at OSCON. Right. And uh, I think that's pull the little wagon along. Pulling that little <laughs> wagon along. So we'll we'll keep on doing that and we'll be back next year with more. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.